Hey, welcome back everyone. It's episode four of Nerdin' Out with Jake, and today's episode we're working on Wally's angry cousin and applying the finicky details to this lovely model. Let's get going. First things first, I wanted to create more contrast than the various details that are on this model. It's a great kit, but there is a ton of detail. So I took a lighter gray color and went along the ridges of all these little pipes and hoses that are extruding itself <laughs> themselves from this uh, giant robot. To make the spinal portion that is black a little more interesting, I took my lightsaber of a brush, some warm gray, and did some very faint edge highlighting just to make them pop a bit. They are black, but you don't need to have them just fade in, in the background. You can actually accentuate black objects very well with this effect. After that was done, I decided to do a little trick I learned from my years of tank modeling. I took a graphite stick out and decided to hit all the edges of the model. Now the background and the lore of these guys that they are steel or metal constructs. I didn't go with the typical route of making them chrome, but I still wanted to show that they are metal. So I took this graphite stick and hit all the ridges and corners and seams of this model to give that look that underneath the paint that metal exoskeleton is there. And here comes the part where I really struggled with this model. I am not the greatest at doing OSL, and I saw a lot of different tutorials and videos out there, so I thought, why not give this a try? I've never done the effect of using uh, fluorescent color paints, so I thought, why not? Let's try this. So I looked on the websites out there for different OSL references and some sci-fi stuff. I thought, well, let's not just make the globes, you know, for red OSL. Let's try everything in OSL. And while there's a thumbs up there, I more or less shot myself in the foot, but it was a valuable learning experience. The fluorescent paint takes a long time to layer up, but it does a really good job of creating the effect that you want. I'll admit, it's a lot of it's user error in this point, or at this point, but I just wasn't getting the result I wanted, and I really felt like I was losing that grim, dark aesthetic I was really going for by incorporating too many lit areas around this model. And while it looked good at a time, I just wasn't happy as I was going through it. Stuff just wasn't lining up this entire process, and I felt like I was getting a little carried away with the, <laughs> the effect. Now, the eye effect is what I wanted the most. That's where I wanted the, the viewer to look at the model and focus on the model. So I'll admit, I did a pretty good job at that point, or at this piece of the model. But I had to put the model down for a little bit, walk away for a good half hour, and then come back and think, you know what? I just got to redo this. So I took my, my rubber black, based over everything I wanted to be darker, and then went about creating this dark, deep red glowing effect with the orange on the top. I look at the reference material or the photographs that the, you know, the studio has done for these models and they have glowing stuff everywhere. And to me, it, it, I don't know, it, that's just not my thing. I want to make subtle areas pop, like the face is a very subtle feature on this model. I want to make that the focal point and make it pop. They can have other glowing, you know, orbs like these things up on top, but I want to make the face the focal point, and I want to give the illusion or the impression that these, you know, machines are dark and ominous. They're not going to be glowing like a Christmas tree. Again, that's my vision of these guys. It's Warhammer 40k, it's grimdark, and that's just how I see things. Overall, this model was a learning experience. It really taught me to just fail, but get back up and keep going. I owe it to, you know, just perseverance, but also my buddies who helped me through this process of just bouncing ideas off them, like JP, my buddy Mike, Dan, and my buddy Kyle. Um, and that's that. Overall, it was a great learning experience, and I had a lot of fun, well, at the end. And that makes all of this episode that much better. So thanks for watching this one. I'll talk to you guys next time. If you want to, hit like and subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you for the final video where I cover doing the basic stuff. Have a great one, guys.